I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars, and this is a 1953 MGTD. Now you might remember that a little while ago, I tore down an MGTD engine, found some really nasty things inside of it. Let's take a look. So, uh, we'll get down to the teardown. Okay, it's really bad in here. All right, here's what I'm looking at. You can see on the wall of this cylinder right here. Look at that very very crunchy there this one is full of something there's all kinds of gunk in there this piston should be at the same height as this one so that's how far down that piston is there look at that one and just it's just all full of crud if you look down inside this piston you can see that the rod is no longer attached down there. Here I have the piston out and I was able to squeeze the rod out uh, past the crankshaft there. You can see how much damage is done on the inside of the piston there. Now that I've had the engine flipped upside down, these cylinders could drain and you can see how horrible that is. That's all that crud that was sitting on top of the piston. There is still quite a bit of gunk here. Standing straight up and down, you can see a lot better down into those two cylinders. That engine was a mess. It's been machined, it's been bored out, it's been put back together, painted, and now it's sitting back in the car. The engine does run, but I need to check the timing, I need to adjust the carbs, and I need to take it for a test drive. So I thought I'd show you those things today. Before I try to tune the carbs, I want to check the timing. So I have my timing light hooked up. This car is positive ground. And what I'm going to be looking for when I'm timing, just to the right of the center of the screen, you see a pointer that's on the engine. And then on the crank pulley, there's a white mark going across the pulley. When those marks line up with the pointer, the engine is at top dead center. So I'm going to be using those marks when I'm timing the engine. For this car, I'm going to select conventional ignition. This is a four cylinder. You see the battery right now is at 12.6 volts. What I'm going to do is set my target advance at about 30 degrees. You want it to be somewhere between 28 and 32. I'm going to start out at 30 degrees. To set total timing, I'm going to start the car and then rev up the engine and when I see the timing mark stop moving, I know that it is not going to advance anymore. Then I can rotate the distributor to where my marks meet up. That will give me a total timing of 30 degrees. Before I make any adjustments, I need to loosen the distributor, which is done by that nut that you can see in the center of the screen right now. Because I will need to have some extra throttle, I'm going to use this device, which clamps onto the steering wheel and then pushes the accelerator pedal down. Once the end of it is touching the throttle pedal, I can adjust the throttle in very small increments by turning this knob. Now that the timing is where I want it, I can tighten that bolt back down again. Now moving on to the carbs, I'll have to get these air cleaners off first. I have the air cleaners off. Now I need to disconnect the linkage between the two carbs because I want to change the sink of them. I will check it first. Okay, now this one is disconnected. So if I hit the throttle here, it's not moving the throttle plate on this carb. That way I can adjust these individually now. Now I'm going to start the car up and I'll use my sink tool to measure the airflow going through both carburetors. I want to make sure that these are synced and then I'll start my tuning after that. It'll just be easier to keep the engine running if I know that the carbs are fairly in tune with each other. Okay, this side is reading about six and the front carb is reading about 12. So I'll increase this one so that it matches the front carb.
Now we know the carbs are working equally as hard. Now we can let the car warm up and then I'll work on the mixtures. Now I can use my SU adjusting wrench and I'll use it to turn the jets up and down based on if I need it a richer or a leaner mixture. And I have a good diagram here to explain what you're going to be doing. When you lift up the piston just slightly, you're going to hear the engine react. And if after you lift it up, if the engine starts to die off, then you know that you need more fuel. If you lift it up and the engine speeds up, then you're running rich and you need to dial it back a little bit. If you lift it up and you hear the engine come up a little bit and then fall back down, although still at a slightly higher RPM than when you started, that means your carburetor is tuned correctly. And that's the process that I'm going to be using right now. Later SU carburetors have lifting pins that will help you lift up the piston a certain amount. But since these don't have that, I'm just going to be taking a little screwdriver and just slightly lifting it up by hand. Before I start, I'm going to reset both the carburetors. I'm gonna take them all the way up until they stop. And then I'm going to bring them two rotations down. Now make sure that the choke is released all the way. Make sure the linkage is not holding the jets down at all. Idling quite high, so I need to lower that a little. We know we're too lean there. We're also too lean there. just about right. This one here is still a little too lean. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there. Now I'm going to resync them again. tachometer looks all right so I'm going to lock them in at this position. I'm going to connect the linkage between the two carbs again so the throttle will work both of them instead of just one and we'll take it for a drive and see how well this works. the car seems to be running really nicely. Pretty smooth, has good power. Oil 
pressure sitting at about 50 psi. Of course, Smith's gauges are known to be not the most accurate things. Water temp is staying at 170 degrees. I haven't heard any pops from the uh, carburetors. The power seems to be smooth. No hiccups. So I think we got things where we want them to be. the T-Series cars. I did own a predecessor. I had a 1932 J2 Midget. Unfortunately that car wasn't in the best shape so I haven't kept it around but I just love these T-Series cars. Well that's going to be it for today. If you want to see more MGTD content comment below and click subscribe.